Thanks for tuning in to the old dirty basement. On this week's episode, we're covering Charles Harrelson. He murdered a few people and even alleges himself to have murdered or been a part of the assassination of John F. Kennedy. Yeah, they said he was chilling in the grassy knoll. I don't know. I don't know. But this guy, yeah, he's uh, yeah, he's related to a pretty famous person out there, a guy that maybe played a murder in some movies and even played uh, in, in a show. That was a very good. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah, with a name like Harrelson, you're, we're going to, you know, whittle down the uh, possibilities there. Yeah, I knew nothing of this, Matt, so I'm excited to hear about it. Uh, we hope you uh, enjoy our coverage of this. And if you're enjoying the show, leave that five-star rating, Spotify, Apple, Google, wherever you're at, and sit back, relax, and enjoy Charles Harrelson. This is the old dirty basement, home to debauchery, madness, murder, and mayhem. A terror-filled train ride deep into the depths of the devil's den. With a little bit of humor, history, and copious consciousness. I'm your announcer, Shallow Throat. Your hosts are Dave, Matt, and Zap. I love you, Matthew McConaughey. All right, all right, all right. Hey, this is Dave, Matt, and Zap, and welcome to the Old Dirty Basement, where every week we cover a true crime, murder, or compelling story. So sit back, relax, and comprehend. Hello, hello, happy afternoon, and welcome to the Old Dirty Basement. I am Matt. With me always is Dave and Zap. Good afternoon, fellas. What's going on? Happy afternoon, everybody. Yes, happy. I don't know why the afternoon just seemed out of... Doesn't it seem after noony? <laughs> it does. It's that sun fucking with you. Yeah, because yep. the days are getting longer. Yeah, man. I hate like that the, shit. Yeah, I yeah. know. I like. I like dark. I, I, I'm telling you, the 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 saddest day of the year for me is the middle of December, whatever it is, or the third week in December, uh-huh. when it's just that the longest amount of nighttime. Because mm-hmm. I hate the fucking daylight. Like yeah. I just love darker. You probably like that. Uh, or no, that was the other way around. That movie with Pacino up in Alaska. You ever see that one where they, it was like daytime? All the, you know what I mean? I think no. it was Alaska. What was that? Uh, Thirty Days a Night. No, nah, that was a I Pacino. Forget, I forget what it was called, but that was a great. He was movie, like a though. detective, and it was like one of the. I, I don't know. Maybe it wasn't Alaska. It was somewhere, and it was just daylight all the time. So one of those places where they have like six months of daytime. I think that's Alaska. Yeah, that would it, suck. Yeah, it might have been Alaska. I think that's what it was. That's got to fuck with your circadian rhythm, man. Oh, it really messes you up. I'm did sure. You, did you guys hear about like now? They said, "Are, are we done with?" Going back, we just spring ahead and then we stay there this year. Is that true? Somebody told me that. Uh, daylight savings. I hope not, man. No, that's it. Like I've I, heard that. Like once the I, I heard that, but I mean, if you're telling me too, that's. I mean, it's got to be true. Yeah, they said they might not need that anymore. I guess that's I, I don't fucked know. up, man. Yeah, that's a slap in the face to Ben Franklin. By the way, mm-hmm. one big slap. It was just to create more labor hours. Yeah, <laughs> that's all it was for. I'm for that. Right. <sighs> got to work, man. Yeah, you do got to work. Yeah. That's why we're here working, trying right. to pay the bills. Yeah, man. Speaking of which. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of getting back to work. <laughs> yeah, Matt, you uh, you told me about the uh, Zap and I. You texted us. And I don't think, Zap, did you know about this? I had no idea this guy existed. Yeah. Nor did I, but there was a lot of stuff on the uh, internet about all this going on. And, uh, like, people knew about this for a long time. I've I've asked people, and I've found one person out of, let's say, I asked 15 people. One person knew about this. I mean, that's just a small, you know, group. You know, I'm I'm sure if you ask more people, more, you know, obviously, but I think it's a small percentage of people that are aware of Woody Harrelson's dad. Yeah, and what Charles Charles Har- Charles Harrison Harrelson Harrelson. Yes, fun fact: this is the father of Woody Harrelson, mm-hmm. Charles Chuck Harrelson. So Charles Chuck Harrelson, born on July twenty third, nineteen thirty eight the son of Alma Lee and Void Harrelson. He was married four times, this guy. Oh. He liked the, he was born in Love Lady, Texas. Love, he, well, this so guy that's, loved that's why the he ladies. Loved, exactly. <laughs> uh, mm, mm. Mm-hmm. First one was Nancy Hillman Harrelson. Next one was Diane Lou Oswald, Joe Ann Harrelson, and Gina Adele Forrester. So who was uh who Sorry, was young? My bad. That oh. was Gina Adele Foster. Foster. Now who were these girls? The these were his. Married? These were his four wives. Oh, his wives. Okay. So Woody's Woody's uh, mom was the first, correct? And he had like Nancy. two yep. brothers. 
Yes. There's Woody, Little Woody, and Littler Woody. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I, I mean, I, yep. As <laughs> the older I get, I, I'm, I'm getting littler Woody. A little smaller. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. Is that frequency or? Yeah. So this guy started out, he worked as an encyclopedia salesman in California and as a professional gambler. So door to door salesman of encyclopedias? Yeah. I was Could, thinking about that. I, like, as, go. Go ahead. As, no, go no, ahead. no, no, I, I, well, no. I want you to, I want you to dump what you got. I was just thinking about door to door, like salesmen and stuff like that. Like, uh, well, obviously, encyclopedias, you're not going to see that anymore because you can get it all online. So that's like a, a lost art form. I, I had encyclopedias. Oh, well, I think we all probably did. Yeah, yeah. And I bet we all bought them at the grocery store volume by volume. Can yeah. I, tell you? I think I can only afford like Ada, Ada D or something like that. <laughs> I didn't get all of them. Can, can I tell the kids a cool trick out there when, What's that? when we were kids? Uh, we would have, uh, our friends would have different encyclopedias. So mm-hmm. when you would have to do a um, book report, book report or anything like that you would call your friend and for your bibliography you would just ask what their encyclopedia was so you basically copy your encyclopedia and put the other encyclopedia down as your uh, so you could throw them off the track yeah yeah ah. yeah so the teachers didn't know what was going on they can you'd find it as easily yes yeah, that yeah. makes sense hmm. it was a way to trick trick the teachers back then yeah where, where are we gonna they, go with the door-to-door stuff the, not even the door-to-door i was gonna go straight for the the only ins- I, i'm trying to figure out how one would need to sell encyclopedias door to door because mm-hmm. they were widely available at your local grocer. At oh, least for so, real? so well I'm saying it like a giant, right? You're, you could get them there. I didn't even Absolutely. know that. Absolutely. So you yeah, should. they would sell them it was like a dollar a volume. Like the first I'm sorry, the first volume was like a dollar, then everything after that was like 4 or 5 dollars a book or some such shit. I did not know that. Maybe they were higher end encyclopedias. I can't remember what the the make of them was. Yeah. And what was like the how long before they'd be out even outdated, you know what I mean? Cuz you know of stuff, course, this stuff would be. I wonder how long like times are average, changing yeah. every day. Well, so that was the that was the the hook because mm-hmm. they keep they would print these things, you know, a new one like every x number of years, every year, every two years, whatever to update. And you yeah. had to stay current, and your shit be out of date. Yeah, hmm. interesting. Yeah, I just thought that was a cool fact, and I just think about it. they're still selling shit door to door now. The big thing is solar panels. These, mm-hmm. these guys come around. In yeah, our just in our neighborhood. Mm-hmm. Selling these damn solar panels or they're trying to sell your uh, cable internet or switch of this, switch of that. Yep. You know, so I guess it never ends. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, go ahead. No, go, go ahead, man. No, just saying maybe that's why he was like so with the ladies because you right. had like at that time there was a lot of like housewives at home. I know you have this strapping young lad coming with some some encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah. look at all this knowledge. Yeah. He said, hey, I'm a very <laughs> smart man. <laughs> Get a discount. You know what yeah, they say yeah. about guys with big books. That's right. <laughs> so... Not only an encyclopedia salesman and not only a professional gambler, this guy was also a killer for hire. So, you know, that was just as, you know, this guy was a hustler. Yeah. Look, I'm selling encyclopedias. Sometimes that doesn't, you know, pay the bills. So so then I got to, I'm going to try to be a professional gambler. And if that doesn't work, well, shit, man, I'm. I'll just hire myself out as a killer. Well, you said it right there. The professional gambler was the part that wasn't working. Probably not. And uh, that's the reason I think that he got involved with this uh, hitman for hire type deal mm-hmm. is because he couldn't pay his his gambling debts. I see. So he would take his hard earned earnings from selling encyclopedias and then gamble them away. Yes. Mm-hmm. He wasn't a very good gambler. You know, I see that happen often at the local gas stations and quickie marts. They all just sit there. That, that's up, machines. That those machines, man, just they, they can't wait to spend it. Did you see that he got business cards made up? Yes. This guy. Yeah. Yeah, they were. Uh, they said, uh, "Have gun, will travel, and hitman on hitman. like kill." Mm-hmm. Like, you know what I mean? That's awesome. Yeah, That's I saw that awesome. in one of the uh, YouTube things. They had mm-hmm. he had his own business card. That's I, cool. As I shit. just got business cards made up for all those little promo cards. They so. don't say hitman. No, or no, have no, gun, no. They travel. had that template in there, though. I should have did that. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just to throw people off, give us a little edge. It's like yeah. using a different bibliography, but copying an encyclopedia <laughs> word for word. <laughs> right. Yeah. Or have gun, will travel. It's kind of like you know, we're not just like podcast stars, we're like porn stars. Right. Not really. No. I think that was from Paladin. Paladin. Wasn't that a, a Western? Yeah. Yeah. That was definitely a Western. Okay. I never heard of that. Paladin. That was the opening theme song. Mm. Have gun will travel beats the heart of a man. Mm. A there knight without armor in a savage land. That is from um, Stand By Me. Yes. They did. Yes. They What's sang, his name quoted that in yeah, there as well? They sing Paladin. Okay, cool. Indeed. Very cool. Look that up, people. So this guy, as a killer for hire, he was actually quite unique. He used a, so a killer for hire is just going to go up and kill somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Just like you see him, whatever, like, think of like, I don't know, fucking Jack Ruby. Just out of nowhere, point blank, just shoot a pistol. This guy was the actual, like, he thought it out. He used a sniper rifle. 
from the distance. Yeah. He kill him. So yeah, he would from a distance. <laughs> yeah, right. He kept it sneaky, sneaky. Mm. Any military training on this guy? I've got nothing to that that speaks to that. Yeah, he was a Navy uh, veteran. Okay. Huh. So mm. McDomer. Mm. Oh, I didn't think about that. I, yeah. Hey, look, it's all look, man. You, there is a propensity for you to be a killer if you've been in the armed services. That's what we're finding out. Yeah, yeah. more and more. Yes, he was. Uh, he was in the Navy. Uh, honorable discharge. Did his his years, and mm. so there was some training. Did some training in the old uh, gun shooting. Interesting. He also had uh, training in robbing because uh, he was convicted of armed robbery in 1960. I got that. Mm. Uh, after that conviction, or I should say, not long after that conviction, uh, he only served a, a few months for that. Like maybe, oh, really? yeah, four or five months for the armed robbery. Uh, years later, in 1968, he disappeared from his family when Woody Harrelson was only seven years old. So that left, at the time, now he had already divorced his first wife. Mm-hmm. She gone. Right. So at this point now, he was married to Diane Lou Oswald. Uh, he left his second wife, Diane, uh, to raise Woody and his two brothers, little Woody and littler Woody. Just to foreshadow Woody's. a little bit, Oswald, remember that, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. That may have uh, that may have a foreshadow associated yes. with it. May. It may. It's it may. crazy. Yeah. So on May 28th, 1968, there was a murder of a guy named Alan Harry Berg. Now, this guy was, the, Charles was, uh, you know, captured for it. He was, you know, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like uh, accused. Charged. Of yeah, yeah, he, he was charged. charged with it. What the hell? Like Sorry, as, as, a hit, as a hit man for hire. That's mm-hmm. right. That's he was right. charged. And he was actually acquitted by a jury. Uh, on September 22nd, 1970. Did he leave his business card there? Is that how they got him? I don't know. He might have. I know that the the story of this murder is depicted in the memoir, Run, Brother, Run, which was written by Berg's brother. Mm-hmm. That's not to be confused with Oh, Brother, Where Art Thou? Just oh, a good yeah, movie. with Clooney and stuff. Yeah, that was a good yeah. movie. Yeah. This is not that. Okay. So, fun fact, uh, in this trial, this guy was defended by a guy named, so I should say Charles, was defended by a guy named Percy Foreman. And he was a high-end, right? He was a high-end lawyer. He was a very high-end lawyer. He was one of the foremost trial lawyers in Texas. Uh, he actually had defended James Earl Ray. Who, does anybody know who that is? Mailbag yeah. people. I, I do. James Earl Ray, yeah. Are you serious? You don't no, I'm, no, I'm calling out. Like, I wonder if people know Like from oh, when yeah. you say the name. Well, I'm going to spoil it. I mean, that's the guy that shot Martin Luther to King. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was actually, so as, we're for, as we uh, foreshadowed, mm-hmm. This lawyer was requested to be represented by uh, Jack Ruby. Oh, wow. So Jack that's, Ruby, yeah, that is to say, right, so yeah. Jack Ruby requested, like, look, man, I want to be defended by this Percy Foreman because this guy's good. Right. Jack Ruby shot Lee Harvey Oswald. Oswald, last name of Harrelson's second wife. Yeah, that's what I was, yeah. Whoa. Said the connection. To have shot John yeah. F. Kennedy. John F. Kennedy. In the grassy knoll from the tower. Indeed. Mm-hmm. With seven other people. Mm. I, yep. No, there was only one. It was a magical bullet. That's right, the magic bullet. Magic bullet. Seems like those three names when you have like James Earl Ray, you're either a killer or a guitarist. Like, just seems like that. Those you're names. thinking Stevie James Ray, Ray Vaughan. Yeah. Yeah. No, just saying his name when you no, have three names. When you think of James Earl Ray, that's the voice of uh, Darth Vader. Oh, that's right. That's that right. could be that too. Yeah. Could be. And I'm just thinking about three. Yeah, James. <laughs> Three names, there's no, it's always like that. This like, is CNN. That's right. <laughs> That's the guy, yeah. That's James Earl Ray. Yeah. Yeah. But anyway, oh, back to the uh, the magic bullet. Um, what's that song from? Like, I have a magic bullet. I don't know. I don't know that one. <laughs> the, um, is that from Willy Wonka? The, yes, thank you. Oh. Yes. From the original one. The original one. What he's, yes. what he's saying is, I've got a golden ticket. But he said, instead of, I've got a golden ticket. Oh, that's oh, what I was thinking. I got, I got a magic bullet. bullet. Oh, I got you. Okay. It's a JFK from the magic bullet. Mm. Sorry about that. I'm just yep. going yeah. off of my own little wonderland of coolness. Arlen Specter. Fun fact, kiddos. Arlen Specter. If you know that name, that's the guy that came up with the concept of the magic bullet. And Pennsylvania, Arlen Specter. He was a Pennsylvania. Uh, yep. what, mm-hmm. what was he here in PA? Like uh, Senator. Senator, okay. Yeah. Senator Arlen Theodore Specter. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The third. He changed his political ties, and that was his political doom. Mm. Switched parties. Oh, the party was over. So later on, in 1968, he was tried for the murder of the, I'm sorry, the murder for hire killing of a guy named Sam DeGalia Jr. 
So this is two he's getting off on. Yes, this is going to be the second one. He was tried. He was paid. Now, this guy, murder for hire, he was paid two grand uh, to, to murder this guy. Uh, the first trial ended with a deadlock jury. It was, so that was, that was the first time. The, you know, half and half, 50%, 50-50. Yes, no. All right. Right. Next one was, uh, the thing was retried in 1973. Now, in this one, he was convicted, and he was sentenced to 15 years in prison. Only 15, though. Only 15 for murdering, you know, murdering for hire. Mm. That's not bad, man. That's a pretty good deal. Now, this guy did have, tie, like, mob ties, right? Or, like, gambling, like, there was something, like, this Harrelson had a tie to organized Jim, crime in some way. Jimmy Chagra. That Jimmy Chagra had mob ties? Yes. Which then was Todd Harrelson. I was just... Because uh, I was wondering if, like, these light sentences and getting off had anything to do with, like, maybe. But that goes on, like, later on in life. Like, but I think. With jurors being, like, threatened or feeling threatened, you know, that mm. type of stuff. Tampering. Witness tampering. Witness tampering, yeah. yeah. But the hitman thing came from his uh, gambling debts. Like, I think he was involved with a lot of people. And they were like, well, take this guy out for us because he might, like, uh, go to court and say stuff about our name and mm. so they would send harrelson to, yeah. to take care of it and he would do it like two thousand dollars right so that's why i was wondering if maybe i mean i guess that was a decent amount of money back then though. two grand yeah they were talking mm. like in the 60s so like two grand back then might be 20 eight, 18 or 20 nowadays mm -hmm. so all right yeah it's that is good money for I mean, that you do a few of those a year that's not so bad mm-hmm and as long as you know you're selling enough encyclopedias, right to to, uh, to to make up the rest. Yeah, this is a good supplemental income. Mm -hmm. Sentenced to 15 years in prison. However, he only served five of those. Yeah, you could hide the gun in the encyclopedia. Yes, yeah, got it out. That's right. Yeah, like the rock hammer. Yep. Yep. Our Bibles. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this cat served five years, and he was released in 1978 on good behavior. Now that's awesome. Yeah, that is. I I'm killed a guy for money mm -hmm. with intent. And did 15 years. Five. Oh, he did five. I'm he sorry. did sentenced to he 15. Sentenced he only, to only did, did five. five. Yep. Wow. That's, yeah, that's uh, a light sentence for murder. That's why I'm wondering, uh, there's got to be something going on there. Murder light. Right. Murder light. Mm -hmm. So it is It is not without it. its coincidence that we mention things like Oswald, Jack Ruby, etc., Texas, mm -hmm. because... While this guy was in prison, he claimed to have shot President John F. Kennedy in Dallas in 1963, alleging he was one of the three men dressed as bums on the grassy knoll close to the Kennedy motorcade. Now, this self-promotion seems to have helped as he was hired to murder Judge John H. Wood Jr. not long after he was released from prison in 1978. Mm. Now, the murder of uh, District Judge John H. Wood Jr. was huge because that was the first uh, the first murder of a U.S. District Judge ever in the history of the United States. I think it was in the 20th century, they said. Yeah, I don't so know well, if maybe there was one. I guess, one. yeah, okay, so in the 20th century, I guess. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I don't know if there was one back in the day or, you know, who knows. But, yeah, I mean, I always think about that with, uh, with judges and lawyers. And uh, I was even thinking about back in, like, the day with uh, – What's his name? Who was the uh, the mayor of Giuliani? And he was back when he was going after the mob back in the day. Yeah. Like those guys, you're messing with the mob. You know what I mean? Like what would keep them from just taking you out? They're going to rub you out, man. R right. But wasn't Giuliani involved with the mob? The mob? I like think didn't he, was, he take out some people that they wanted him to take out or like I, to name? That I don't know. I'm just saying like when you're a public figure like that and you're going up against organized crime or criminals. So I, you're saying I, like I, how many death threats do judges get? I would, just, I would just think like it would be nerve right. You'd always be looking over your shoulder, you know? I mean, I'm sure they have security detail. Every day, every day. I could imagine. They? Like local judges and stuff? I mean, I've, I, I wouldn't know. I don't know on that level. I'm just saying like some of these big high profile cases, you know, the, you, you would think you'd be nervous if That'd you're take, trying to take out an organization or something or going after like, well, like a judge, an attorney, like <laughs> I'd be afraid to be an attorney. Cause oh, you yeah, that's what I'm saying. I want to be any of that. I think they get to him first. That is to say that they're going to get to them and talk to them and corner them and say, look, you're the judge. Here's how you're going to decide this case. Mm -hmm. Or we're going to, you know, chop off your fingers, murder your kids, rape your wife, do whatever. Right. So I, I think that's what they do. Uh, so if the judges do something, you know, and fuck up, then they get killed. 
Right. The judges have like aliases though. Is that their real names? I don't know. I'm just, I mean, I've always thought about that. Like watching these shows, like I like watching those documentaries about mm-hmm. the mob or whatever, for instance. And I'm thinking about these guys that are publicly trying to take out organized crime or whatever, just as an example, it's got to be nerve wracking. We should get, uh, do you have JW? Can we get him on the horn? I should ask JW, but I don't know what, if he does that kind of crime or not. You See, know? I think about district justices around here mm-hmm. now. So this is just a, you don't even need to be a lawyer to mm-hmm. be a district justice. So you got, you're, you're doing sentences for people that I mean, many of them don't have two nickels to rub together. Mm-hmm. So you hand down some big sentence on somebody, they got nothing to lose. They'll, they'll fucking shoot you. Yeah. Like, that would scare me. Well, when we called uh, JW to so JW, uh, we were yes, talking, we were talking about like lawyers and like judges and stuff when it comes to like dealing with, um, like high profile cases where like organized crime. Hold on real quick for our newer listeners. This is JW. He is our, our attorney. Right. At law answers some questions for us. And other things. I know the answer to this one already. Judges wear robes. Lawyers don't. Okay. Anything else? Nope. That was it. (laughs) Thank thank you. you. All right. That was awesome. Thank you. Fantastic. We were just talking about like, is, is that really it? Is that the answer? So the lawyers or the uh, robes are like bulletproof or what? Uh, no, 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 no. The better question is what's underneath. Oh, uh, okay, mm. okay. It's like night court. <laughs> no, we, we do have we do have a very important question. Go ahead. Matt. Yes, no, sir. Go ahead, Dave. You you, you know what no, we're going to ask. You get charged for this one. You go ahead. No, I don't have the kind of money for that. <laughs> Zap, go ahead. Nope. Okay. So judges and lawyers, if like, let's say like you're going after organized crime, do you ever worry about retaliation, like them coming after you privately, like at your house or in public? Me personally, no, but that's why I stay low profile with my cases. Oh, okay. You trip on a sidewalk and have a slumlord, I'm your guy. Mm, mm, okay, okay. You need to go after a corporation, uh, go get somebody else. No, all seriousness, though, um, just like a month or two ago, maybe a little bit longer, There was some documented retaliation. I read an article where, and it was on the civil end of the spectrum too, a big law firm in New York was involved in a lawsuit involving the parent company for Madison Square Garden. Mm. And I don't know if you guys read about this, but they started using facial recognition at the venue. So they had... They recognize any lawyer at this firm, not just the lawyers working on the case against Madison Square Garden, Mm -hmm. but they were legit like kicking lawyers and their family out of concerts because they're involved in the same lawsuit that was suing them. Oh, wow. So there you go. That is kind of like retaliation, you know what I mean, against being a a lawyer. But I was thinking more along the lines of like we're doing uh, Charles Harrelson, who's Woody's dad, who was a hitman, and he took out a judge. Was it a federal judge? Yeah, said? federal judge. And uh, killed him. Cause U.S. Was, district court judge. Yeah. Now, they ended up catching him. But I think about that all the time. If you're a lawyer or a judge or something like that going against these guys. Well, he was hired by a Texas drug lord for uh, $250,000 to kill this district judge, which $250,000 in 1979, mm-hmm. it could be worth it to this guy that has nothing. So is there is there lawyers that can, like, when they're assigned a case, can a lawyer back out of it? Or is that part of their job? Like, this is your case, you got it. No, I mean, it all depends on whether you're part of a big firm or working for yourself or <laughs> all honesty, just like the hit, man. How much money's in it for you? Uh, maybe uh, worth but your while. no, that, that, yeah, that comes into, it definitely comes into the thinking of some people with, and not just, you know, whether a hit's going to be put out on you, but how big of a profile case it is or, mm. you know, who's going to be scrutinizing you or, hey, if I take this case, am I going to turn off other people? Or even like to make a decision, like I I know that I mean not frowned upon. I, I don't know how to say it, but uh, if if a judge would have to think long and hard if if they're thinking of putting a drug lord in jail, you know, like uh, like is 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 this what I really want to find in the you know, is this, is this how I want to convict them of murder or is it going to be a lighter sentence? I don't know. No, you're right. I mean, some just don't care and realize that's part of the uh, perils of the job, but there are others, I'm sure, it's it's got a way of just being a human being. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you're saying. Yeah, the human factor behind everything. Yeah. Stressful yeah, job. I, I wouldn't want it. No, I, I 
completely avoided criminal work because this exact same thing. You're uh, you're either putting people behind bars or responsible for not keeping them out of jail. Right. And on either end of that, somebody's not going to be happy with you. Yeah, podcasting uh, uh, is not that dangerous uh, dealing with us and stuff like that. You don't know. We got hey, some stalkers out there, maybe. Yeah. We're going to have to get yeah, JW man, for you some. Did ever watch uh, Only Murders in the Building? You yeah. never know. Yeah, you're right. That's true. <laughs> yeah, if we need anything, we'll we'll give you a holler. Uh, yeah, just uh, how long? How much is it going to cost us? This is a freebie. It's on the house. Oh, oh thank God! That is amazing. I don't, I don't want you. I don't want you guys coming after me. <laughs> yeah, right. We That's appreciate true. that, JW. Thanks, w- man. With pens and paper and facts. <laughs> Ice pick. That's right. Well, JW, we appreciate, it, man. We'll see you on the golf course. See you on the flip side. All right, brother. All right, thanks, JW. Thanks, Later. JW. So there, uh, there we have it. I mean, talking to JW about that, it's it's interesting because some, like you said, you're, you're just there's a human aspect behind the whole thing. Like, do you are you, are you afraid for your life? Are you doing your job? Mm-hmm. Uh, are you taking that money that might be handed to you on, on the side? Are you talking to the guy that talks to you out by the tree with the, you know like with the big hats on and yeah? I don't know. I would think for some of these larger cases, it's going to be something that involves the lawyers, right? Mm-hmm. So the judge, doesn't the judge just sit there? Like, because it comes down to a jury and it comes right. down to what, like, he's just overseeing it. Right. The judge doesn't really make the decision. Yeah, he's, no, just, in the, a, in he's a, just the DJ. Like, the, the lawyer's the rapper. But in a district right. court, though, isn't, doesn't, isn't it the judge's decision? Isn't there a lot of courts where it's just, like, based on the can judge's a, like decision? Like a judge can override it. That's correct. Yeah, yeah. that's correct. There's some, there's some cases that go directly to a judge, especially, I think, a U.S. district judge mm-hmm. would be yep. the one deciding on the case. That's absolutely true. When we go to cases like where, you know, you have a jury of your peers, I think they're different type cases. No, you're right. That's why, I mean, judges are a really big fucking deal. They, they are a big deal. Yeah, they, they don't make like 20 bucks an hour or anything like that. Look, they're man, not I still get bent when it comes to what so many people call off-year elections. Mm-hmm. Like, dude, those are the years that you're you're voting for judges. Like, that's a big mm-hmm. fucking deal. Right. Like, get out on that, man. That's a big deal. Mm-hmm. I would like to be a Supreme Court judge yeah that's the job right there well, how, I how, how about your line of work that being like uh dealing with money man like a cpa or, or anything like that where uh i wonder if those guys ever have to deal with i guess if they're getting money illegally like that 250k they're hiding it they're putting it in their mattress and 100 like percent yeah. they're not get the the, the the payment for something like that ink and paper is not brought into the the thing like it's you know there's it's not like you had to take a check to the bank like this is all cash what about like ozark where they come like rough you up <laughs> like launder this shit for me make it work and if you get that deep into something and you're getting threats mm-hmm. you, yeah you might have chosen poorly but see but, in, a, in a business like this with uh with mr harrelson there um being a hitman and stuff i think there a lot of stuff isn't like regular payment either like uh sometimes people don't have money i think so they'll give you in I don't know if they own like a restaurant or a bar, isn't there like payments like that? Like so even to this day, like people, I think they ask for favors or ask for something they don't have monetary value to cover it, so they mm-hmm. do it with other things. Right. So one of the one of the bigger causes for like a hitman, is something like that, is to kill somebody for insurance proceeds. Oh yeah. So mm-hmm. that takes a long time to fucking process. So you got to be like decent enough with your killer. It's like, look, man, I don't have the fucking money. But as soon as the insurance goes through, I'll have the fucking money and we'll be okay. Just calm down, relax. I'll pay you as soon as I get the money. Right. What's the time frame on that? Usually, like if you take somebody out and they have insurance, like what if you had to guess to me? I mean, maybe, maybe, maybe you know, but I couldn't is it like even. a year. Two I years? couldn't even year just because two. just because each case is so unique. Mm-hmm. There's, I, I can't believe that there's an average. Mm. Yeah. I'm sure that the, the range is just so big. Mm hmm. It's not even worth it because if there's one thing that insurance companies don't like to do, it's pay money. Right, they want to get out of it. Yeah. So a lot of moving parts here, I guess, with all this. Yeah. Where are you where are you at in life where you contemplate taking another's life as as a professional hitman, as where people can hire you? And I know we'll we'll get to this in the story where I mean he talked a lot of shit. Like, well, did his you, numbers. Did you hear what he said about, about the human head? No, his, he said just like a watermelon, with like hair on it, and to him it was like, like you know, you squash a watermelon and it just explodes. Like yep. it meant nothing to him. Like human life, to these people that can kill like that, it's just no big deal. Like their mind doesn't work like ours. You know, well, I hope not. <laughs> like mine, like yours. I'm, I'm hoping. But so okay. this guy's also so typically a hitman is killing strangers. It's not killing people he knows. Right. No. 
So but they, but they probably could, I guess. Like if you, you know what I mean. If you paid them enough, you think. Well, I'm just saying, like if well, you're that. Look at like, sick. A, well, look at Gross Point Blank. Mm. Mm-hmm. Great movie. Love the Lincolns in that. God damn, I want that that's town right, car yeah. so mm. bad. <laughs> God damn, that that's just a dream car for me. Like or subscribe. Yeah, sack, yeah. <laughs> so, I mean, so this guy was, you know, a, a hired killer hitman yeah hired hitman and he was a regular guy though well like, he was a regular yeah, guy but just a regular guy he ended up coming back to gross point because his would be target was his ex girlfriend's father mm-hmm. so at, i mean that's when he threw in the town said look i don't want to do it anymore yeah he couldn't do it i guess someone probably can but you oh, much like gross point blank you can't be at that level when you get to that level of being a professional hitman you just can't say i i don't want to because then there's another hitman to take you out, correct? No, not necessarily take you out. It's just take your jobs. Well, yeah. I'll tell you a great show on that. It's called Barry on HBO. Did you ever watch that? With like Marion Barry? Barry. B A. He was a judge, wasn't he? He was a judge. No, Marion Barry was the, the mayor. mayor. Of that's right. Yes, that's right. right. I and thought he, it was Judge Marion. Not to be those... confu- confused with Marvin Barry. Mar- that's right. Yeah. <laughs> From uh, Back to the Future. That's right. Chuck's yeah. cousin. Yeah, that's right. No, no, uh, Marion Barry. He did the the crack cocaine. He loved crack. Yeah, he loved it. Crack and hookers. Crack rocks. In love with the cocoa. Yes. Um. No. Uh. Barry is on HBO. It's Bill Hader. He was like an army vet, mm-hmm. and uh, he's a hitman. And mm-hmm. he, he triad. Yeah, but he can just kill like it. But you know, it's like no big deal. But he does it for money and does it, and then he does want to get out of it. But it's a hitman story. It's a comedy kind of. It's good though. But yeah, these guys, a lot of them, I think they they'll just go whoever if they're I, sick like that. Which I, but are they sick? Is it just a job? I mean, I think if you kill anybody, you got to be sick. Well, yeah, no doc- matter for money or what. What about a doctor? What do you mean? I mean, I'm sure they screw up in surgery where somebody but dies. That's not, they're not doing it for money. Like, I'm going to kill you for money, like, purposely. Well, they're making money. You die. It would just stop. That's an accident. That's an it accident. It is an accident. Per- but maybe. You're, you're comparing that to somebody who's pulling a gun uh, you know, or, or rifling somebody, you know, a sniper, you know, mm-hmm. using a sniper rifle on somebody from you know, however far away with intent to kill. Like, a, right. quite simply, a doctor doesn't go in with intent to kill. No, not at all. But sometimes accidents happen. Mm. But I'm just saying. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Accepting abortions. That's a different story. And right. we don't need to get into that. Right. <laughs> Speaking of U.S. Supreme Court justices. <laughs> okay. But, yeah, I just wonder about that. Like, uh, you know, I, I, I would think if you're going to kill, I don't know where you draw the line, but like Zap said, I'm sure there are some people who will draw the line. Like I'm not killing family members or somebody I care about, but. But is it like once you do it once, is it? I'm sure that first one yeah, is a hurdle. Yeah, the first one has to be. Once you get past that. Yeah. They train you how to do that in the military. Mm-hmm. Much like, yeah, anything in life. Like once you get over the first hurdle, I guess it becomes easier and easier and easier. Right. But yeah. For I don't know. Strange. <laughs> well, whatever. So, uh, with with no further ado, as we've been talking about this killing for hire and judges, shortly after Harrelson was paroled in 1978, he and his then wife and third wife, I'm, I should say they were the same. At that time, his, his third wife, his third wife Joanne, uh, were implicated in the murder of U.S. District Judge John H. Wood Jr. Do you know what his nickname was? The something long. Maximum John. That's it, Maximum John. Oh, Not nice. to be confused with Long and Hard Woody. <laughs> <laughs> That's Woody One, Woody yeah, Two, and Little Woody. Yeah. yeah. We mm-hmm. were when we were on the phone with uh, JW. You said Long and Hard. Long and Hard. And we yeah. had just been talking about Woody. <laughs> it was like all going together. <laughs> Man, with Maximum John. With Maximum John. Maximum John. Yeah, uh, had a reputation for issuing very long sentences, specifically go. for drug offenses, which is what he was up for. Well, that's, that's bad news bears for Jimmy Chagra. So, Jamil Chagra of El Paso, Texas. Now, that's Mexican for the past, by the way. El Paso? El Paso. El Paso. The oh, pass. The pass. That's right across from, uh, God damn, what's that town? Guadalajara. No. We were talking about, yeah. Yeah, it's not Guadalajara. It's, Love Lady, uh, Texas. It's like, Love Lady. You. You look right. You can see the border. Amarillo. No. <laughs> it, across the border is Mexico. Tijuana. No. Tijuana's in out, uh, south of California. This one's out of Texas. Chupacabra. We were just talking about yeah. it the other I, In Mexico. Yeah. It's a town in Mexico. Directly, like, a, it, it, it's adjacent to El Paso, which means the pass. The pass. Oh, little town in Mexico. It's, oh, 
Fuck. Juarez. I'm finger boxing. Juarez. That's Juarez. It. It's Juarez. Juarez. Yeah, that's a real shithole. Yeah, they, they put the war in Juarez. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this guy, this drug dealer, Jemiel Chagra of El Paso, was soon to appear before this judge for conviction and sentencing. And again, with a guy like Maximum John, you can expect the worst. So Chagra put out a contract on the judge's life in hopes that he'd ultimately get a different judge and you know, obviously, hopefully, a lesser sentence. Mm -hmm. Harrelson was one of many who uh, was approached for the job. Do you think he found one of his cards somewhere? That's what, what I was wondering. Like up at like a Denny's, like yeah. on, the, on the board? Yeah. Yeah. It, it, this is what I just <laughs> wonder. Like, yeah. yeah. I'm sure he put them up all around, you know? Because you, I mean... If, yeah, if the cop would see something like, oh, yeah, it's funny, yeah. Hit, man, <laughs> yeah. uh, for hire, mm -hmm. you wouldn't think twice about it. Right. He could be a record producer with Hitman, you know? Yeah, Hitman, put like putting on the hits. <laughs> he could be a video game. Yeah. He could be all kinds of things. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool, though. I don't know. Just I've, putting I've, your card out there. Like, hey, waitress lady, you mind handing these out? Well, again, <laughs> while this cat was in prison, uh, Harrelson, again, he was touting himself up, right? Because you're in prison, you got to look tough and act tough, right? Right. So, yeah, man, I'm in here for murder. I'm a contract killer. Hell, man, I was even one of the ones that was shooting at JFK. I killed JFK. I killed JFK, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, okay, we'll see, maybe. So, yeah, there it is. So, while in prison... You ain't killing no JFK. <laughs> man, you ain't, you ain't never shot no, no JFK. JFK. <laughs> so, while in prison, Chagra had been visited by his brother, Joe. Jamil's brother Joe. Oh, okay. Joe Chagra. So their conversation was recorded, and it was in this discussion that uh, Harrelson, uh, I, sh I should say, during their discussion, they mentioned Harrelson having been approached for the job. Now, this judge was the job ju of Hitman murder the, for hire. The job of killing this judge. Okay. Now, while in prison, yeah. I don't know if you part. meant like, like concrete or he wanted like a. <laughs> yeah, you know, you some poured concrete you know, or like yeah, a new deck some or, trees, yeah. some landscaping, maybe yeah, could put, be. put in a pool. So this judge, Judge John H. Wood Jr., was shot in the head in a parking lot outside his San Antonio, Texas home on May 29th, 1979. Harrelson contacted Chagra and took the credit. Harrelson was later apprehended for a completely unrelated reason when calls were made to the police by people who saw Harrelson firing a gun while he was high on drugs. He claimed he was just, he was shooting FBI agents. Yeah, he but, was seeing shit. Yeah, this, high, he was just yeah. hallucinating. He was on the goofballs. The goofballs. What, yeah. what, what was he on? They said like cocaine. Cocaine. He, he was like free, like shooting it right at the rack. What, what kind of cocaine is? Free basin, is that what that is? Or when you shoot it right That's in? heroin. No, 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 no. But no. cocaine, when you, you don't like, shoot cocaine, though, do you? You can shoot cocaine. Yeah, they, they really? said. Really? You just liquefy that shit and put it in the. Put it right in there. They, they said something about him driving down the road and uh, the muffler was loose. And uh, he got, it was annoying him. He got out and like shot, was shooting at the muffler. And then he missed he was so and, high. and shot yeah. the tire. And then it was like a whole thing. And he blew his tire out, but I guess he was like unloading. I was like, bow, bow, yeah. bow. So a bunch of cops came and heard, like, because he was, he was getting away with it. Like nobody knew where he was at. Correct. It was like a Corvette. He mm -hmm. said, yeah. Well, subsequent to his arrest. Or his uh, girlfriend's Corvette. Oh, Ooh. was that? Okay. Yeah. Was it a little red Corvette? Little red it was much Corvette. too fast. Mm. Oh, Prince. Speaking of Prince, he's coming For, up in our next... Foreshadow. Yeah, yeah foreshadow of... <laughs> Movie review. Oh, that's right. Yeah. That's, right yeah. that's right. Yeah. So subsequent to Harrelson's arrest and a, quote, anonymous tip pinned Harrelson to the judge's murder. Now, this anonymous tip and the tape recording of the prison visit conversation between the Chagra brothers... Joe and uh, Jimmy. Joe and Jemiel. JJ Chagra. Mm -hmm. uh, J and J. Of it's like a good pizza shop. Of yeah. The Pass. Middletown. Texas. Mm -hmm. That's right. Oh, that was enough to implicate and charge Harrelson for the judge's murder. Now, Harrelson claimed at the trial that he did not kill the judge. Like, he did not at all. He just took credit for it so he could claim the $250,000 bounty that had been put on the judge's life on by Chagra. Yeah, that's what I did hear that. And, um, I watched something on YouTube, and they were saying that he went back and forth stating that I had nothing to do with it, uh, but I did want the money, and uh, the, the, the killer's still out there. His name would be OJ. Could be. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Could be somebody. Yeah. yeah. 79. Yep. Good, you know, close enough. Mm -hmm. Speaking of OJ. JC Chakra. <laughs> speaking of OJ, I have to give a, I have to give a mailbag shout out. Should I do that now or do that later? You can do it. You now. can do it now. Yeah. All right. So I got a mailbag shout out to uh, one of our listeners, AJ, who was mentioned, who I, uh, 
Freudian slipped his when brother, we were talking his about evil brother AJ. Right. Yeah. Evil bro- OJ's evil brother AJ. Yeah. So AJ, as I mentioned, is an attorney, good friend of mine. Uh, we were talking, you and I, I, you and I, as I'm looking at both of you, the three of us were discussing the differences between a civil trial and a criminal trial. Correct. Mm-hmm. And the biggest difference is the burden of proof. So in a criminal case, uh, the burden of proof has to come to a point where it's beyond a reasonable doubt. Uh, in a civil case, it's actually just a preponderance of the evidence, like 50% or more. So you can have tons of doubt, just be like, I just still think he did it. Yes. And that's pretty much a civil case. That's right. How is that legal? What do you mean? Like, it just goes against everything that... <laughs> That that what a court case is about that goes against like you're you're again you're you're used to the the concept law. of stop you're used to things like a criminal case versus a civil case, it's just how it's set up, man. Just sounds it also isn't that double jeopardy uh, burden of truth burden of proof burden of proof. What was that song by Depeche Mode? It was kind of like that policy of truth policy yeah policy that's okay. I didn't it was like similar. But I had it's cool. Same. Yeah, thanks to AJ. Thank yeah, you, thank AJ. you, AJ. Yeah. yeah, that was pretty cool. It's the yep. It still sounds like double jeopardy to me. What, just double jeopardy is where you're tried for the same thing twice. Twice, which he will be tried for the same thing twice, oh, so just he, in a different court. Do, no, you're, again, you're not. Double jeopardy refers to that what you said, tried for the thing, but in criminal court. Mm. So that's not going to happen. But you're tried criminally, then you can be tried civilly. Mm. I don't know, man. Give it a try. Bullshit. Yeah. It, well, all right, dude. Look, it's okay. just, it makes no sense. It makes no sense to me. Well, then don't break the law and you won't have to worry about well, it. I don't, except on Sundays and every other weekend. Mm. Mm. Breaking the law. That was, uh, we forgot to mention too, uh, another AJ was, uh, that was Aaron Hernandez's middle initial. So he was AJ. Huh. Yeah. We missed that when we were, I was thinking about that afterwards. I heard it and I'm like, oh shit. OJ and then AJ. With a, the crimes. with a completely different AJ in, in the middle. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Who's, a, who's an attorney? Who's an attorney, AJ yeah. in the middle. Where are you at? In, in the, the middle. middle. Go. I should know <laughs> that. Moni AJ in, in the middle. middle. Moni in the middle. Oh, Where that's it. That's middle. it. That's it. <laughs> so, meanwhile, back to Harrelson. So, the recorded conversation of Chagra and uh, his brother. I'm sorry. The, the Yeah, the recorded conversation between Chagra and his brother uh, was enough to seal Harrelson's guilt in the murder. Uh, Harrelson, his wife, and the drug dealer's brother, Joe, uh, they were all implicated in the assassination. Chaga received a 10-year sentence as part of a plea bargain to testify for the prosecution and was acquitted of the murder. Isn't that life? Yeah. In the plea bargain, Chagra Chagra admitted to his role in the murder as that of just simply a conspirator, which is fine. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, sure. So... John, I'm sorry, not John. Uh, Charles. Charles Harrelson, however, was sentenced to two life terms. Uh, Harrelson's wife, Joanne, was sentenced to consecutive terms totaling 25 years on multiple convictions of conspiracy and perjury related to the assassination. See, again, this is what we just talked to with JW. Now, the way that this looks in, in light, looking at it, retrospect, uh, you see that this guy was a Texas drug lord. Chagra. Chagra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, He went, made a deal with with the state or whoever, you know, the federal judge. The federales. Yes, Los Federales. That means uh, federal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So with the the federales, uh, made a deal, said, you know, hey, I'll give you this information. They said, you know what? We're going to take it easy on this guy so we don't end up dead. Doesn't it make sense? Yeah, no. but Woody Harrelson, who they know nothing, can't Woody. do anything to him. Charles, Charles Harrelson, Charles, Harrelson. Charles, <laughs> Woody's yeah. dad, Woody's dad, yeah. can't do anything to him. He'll be in jail. He's going to die in jail. They're not worried about him. But you know, the drug lords, they know they have family. They have there's implications. So I, I think it, it works that way. This guy's as guilty as anybody, but he, he gets get off. One, the li- yeah, to get one guy, they just let the other guy. But slide. that's what I'm saying. They're saying he did. He did. You know, he he talked to him. He let him know. Whatever he needed to know, you know, they said this Chagra guy. We're going to give him this. Uh, we're, uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens with him. But we're, we're going to nail Harrelson. So yeah, they needed to nail somebody. Yeah, right. they always do. You so always do. They knew that they knew that the hit was put out by Jamil Chagra. Mm-hmm. They knew that that hit was absolutely put out. They also knew that Jamil and his brother Joe, uh, they had discussed like, yeah, this dude Harrelson, he's one of the people that are they're likely gonna you know take the bait or you know take the contract to kill this guy Mm -hmm. so you got that all they needed was look man just could one of you please seal the deal and just 
tell us that it was in fact you know testify that it was in fact Harrelson that did it. Cool. Yeah. And there it went. And one could argue that Harrelson is more of a dangerous criminal to be on the streets if he's murdering people and all that versus dealing drugs. I, I don't know. I mean, neither of them are good, but you know, I'm saying like lesser of two evils, I guess. Again, this guy, um, I guess he he made all kinds of claims when he was in jail and what where was he? He did try to escape. I think. Did you guys hear about that? Yes, eventually, I did hear that. Yeah, yeah, eventually. In fact, so he did try to escape on July fourth, fourth of July, mm. ooh, nineteen ninety five. Uh, Harrelson, Harrelson and two other inmates, Gary Settle and Michael Rivers, attempted to escape from the Atlanta Federal Penitentiary, penitentiary using a makeshift rope. A warning shot was fired at them, and... Yeah, that the, ended that, that, yeah. Yeah, exactly. they, they quickly surrendered, like, oh, shit. Yeah, this ain't gonna work. These guys got yeah, if they ever saw Shawshank, they knew they shouldn't be doing that kind of shit. That's right, right. The, the Federal Allies had guns. Yes, yep. yeah. Oh, well, now it is interesting, in 2003... Mm. Jimmy L. Chagra recanted his previous statements, stating that someone other than Harrelson had actually shot the judge. Mm. Uh, as soon as he had heard that, Woody, the his son, son. Uh, Woody's uh, son, uh, attempted to have his father's conviction overturned in order to secure a new trial. Alas, there was no success in that. Yeah. Oh, well. I think they said around $2 million. $2 million for a new trial for, for the his new father. Trials, how much mm-hmm. money out of pocket? How oh, much out of pocket Woody spent? Woody, uh what he spent on that so damn i did i did read that uh woody never really accepted that him or I shouldn't say accepted him but never thought of him as his father but thought of him more as like a friend yeah that as he got to know him and stuff, his yeah, biological didn't, didn't bother, bother. yeah right. they, they try to start a relationship uh woody said i think he was listening to the radio one time when he was in college and he heard the name mentioned you know charles harrelson this mm-hmm. And he's like, I, I don't know many Harrelsons with that name. We researched it and found out that it was his father right. that killed this district judge. And uh, so I guess he wanted to learn more about who his dad was and, you know, started asking information and finally got to meet him. And I, they had, he met, I guess they met once a year. Uh, I, I'm not sure of the timeline, like how, how often they met, but I, I do know that he, and I've heard, and I've, I, re- I read that about and heard people say that uh, Charles was very charming like we talked about with the ladies and all that. And he, he was, uh, when you're born in love lady, it's happening. Yeah. It's, it's in your blood. That's right. Versus when you're born in Juarez. Yeah. You got fighting in your blood. That's yeah. It's or true. Abject or, poverty yeah. or, or really, really bad water. Yes. Yeah. But he, uh, give you the schnitz. He, he had grown to like, like him. He was like almost like a friend to him. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he's like, he said, he said his dad was one of the most charming per- people he's ever talked to spoken with and everything else. So he was all about trying to get him out. And yeah, he said his father is one of the most articulate, well-read and charming people he's ever known. Mm-hmm. And, uh, he, he didn't know. Yeah. He, he was trying to gauge whether it was like loyalty to his father or if they were actually becoming friends. Right. And he realized that he, he could become friends with this guy. Right. And they did share an interesting, uh, fun fact is they shared the same birthday. That is, that, that, that is yes, true, yeah. Yes. I did not know that. Yes. Mm-hmm. Huh. Well, yeah. alas, on March 15th, 2007, Charles Harrelson was found dead in his cell, having died at the age of 68 from a heart attack. Mm, that's a shame. A Pri- prison heart attack. Right. Yeah. Which is what happens when you have like a spicy chi-chi. Mm, yeah. That'll do it to you, yeah. yeah. And did we talk about how... I think we might have said it. How was uh, Charles was saying how he killed like all these people, and when they went to like in reality, it might have been two, three. Yeah, he was lying. Yeah, yeah. again, how we always talk about these yep. when they mm-hmm. say like they're in jail. Like, oh, I'm going to make a name for my. I killed fifty I, people. I killed Maybe somebody. I killed sixty. You're, you're never going to find them all. Like I was a hitman. I was, you know, the best hitman mm-hmm. in this side of Texas or whatever. The only one that we've done so far that I'll give actual credit to justifying his claims is the one we recently did samuel little oh samuel yeah Yeah, because i mean this guy's actually able to draw pictures no this is this -hmm. is what she looked like when you found her this is what she was wearing right blah blah and sure enough like it goes back and it matches the police records so samuel didn't do a little but a lot he did Mm, a lot indeed and then Dahmer, i mean he had the bones and all that yep like he kept those at his apartment so some of these guys like they'll uh they won't go above and beyond what but no i don't know if Dahmer ever claimed any that that they didn't find. I guess there was no. The I think one. like the true, like psychotic serial killers don't really like jump their claims that much. I think they kind of like 
are pretty realistic about how Agreed. crazy they are. They stay I agree. There, yeah. It's usually the ones that like Charles Harrelson that really haven't done too much, but want their name out there so much. Like, yeah. hey, remember me? Remember this me? This explains so much why his son became an actor, right? Yeah, because his dad was <laughs> the same way. I guess. Yeah, his dad was saying. just as much of an actor, right? And there was a lot of things with uh, Woody Harrelson being um, uh, natural born killers. He was in. That's Which right. he said was, you know, could be a weird story in relation to his father. Mm -hmm. um, Oliver Stone, right? Yeah, that was an Oliver yeah. Stone movie. He was just in one uh, movie late, uh, recently about a hitman. He played a hitman in uh, No Country for Old Men. Is that what it's called? Yeah, I don't think he was. The, was he a hitman in that? Because it was. Uh, he was a Texas hitman. Because it was. Uh, what's his name? Not Gerard Depardieu. Gerard Depardieu. Gerard Depardieu. <laughs> uh, what is that guy's name? I know who you're talking about. Yeah. He was a bad guy with in, the bad haircut in Skyfall. Yeah, yeah. But he, he was a good guy in uh, Lyle Lyle the Crocodile. Never Great saw kids that. movie. No. Wait a second, time. Woody Harrelson was in No Country for Old Men. Yes, he was, was he a Texas hitman? I'm pretty sure. I do think he was in it, but I didn't think he was a uh, a hitman. Maybe it was in like uh, law enforcement or something. No, he he was because that was a guy going around killing him with the cow prod. Correct. Z z no, that wasn't Woody. No, no, no. I'm saying the main guy, not Gerard Depardieu. Which was not like Gerard that. Depardieu. Yeah, but the name kind of reminds me right. of something Oh, like it does. That. So, yeah, Gerard Depardieu was the bad guy <laughs> yeah. in that movie. But it's it hard. It Javier Bardem. Yeah. Yes. Javier Javier. Bardem. Javier with his Javi hair. Yeah, Javi hair. That was a great hair. He had that hair like Mo. Yeah, like I need, I need to get that cut. Like, you know, Three Stooges hair. That guy was such a load. Yeah, that's right. It's a new word. It's a new word. <laughs> I don't know. I still can't understand what it means. I, I still can't wrap my head around a definition of load ah this guy's a load like we used to use it all the time i guess back in the day okay he played uh carson wells that's how we all start mm. right. we all started that's true <laughs> yeah at, at <laughs> some all, point in our lives <laughs> we've all been loads, we've all been loads right. that made it yeah some of us change mm. some of us don't but yeah i think in uh he was uh yeah he was a hitman that was a legit law enforcement guy but he okay. was a gun for hire Oh. He, he's also in hot water. Uh, well, I shouldn't say hot water, but he was in the news recently. Did you hear about that, Woody? Woody what, for the was in a hot tub. SNL thing. Yeah, what did he say? I wouldn't say not, he was in hot not water. Not hot water, but you know how people get all bent out of shape. What, haters are going to hate, man. Yeah, yeah. You can't have opinions that go against the what, what the media tells you. Right. Mm. Did you see any of that? No, what happened? He was on SNL, and he basically did a monologue. It was kind of rambling. He was about getting high and, and stuff. And at the end, he talked about this drug cartel that was taking over the world and making people stay home and take their drug and this and that. So he's basically talking about like uh, vaccines and stuff like that. Oh, but so he was making like a joke about it. And the joke was, look, I'm an actor. I'm in Hollywood. I get offered scripts all the time. Mm -hmm. And this one time I was offered a script and it was uh, the story of all the world's biggest drug cartels all get together. Mm -hmm. They buy off the politicians, mm -hmm. they buy off the media mm -hmm. and they convince the world that they have to stay in their houses. Everybody has to stay in their houses unless you take our drug over and, and over, over yeah. and over again. And if you do that, we'll let you out of the house. So I'm, so I'm talking as Woody Harrelson. Mm -hmm. So I see a script like that and I said, nobody's going to believe that. I mean, yeah. that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. This, this world, I mean, what Woody said was actually, that's pretty, it's pretty deep, man. It was funny. I it was, it it, yeah, it was funny, but then the people, you know, some people are going to well, some people get go crazy about, shape, yeah, but about it. But it's just funny that that just happened Saturday, and yeah. we're recording now here Tuesday, and it's a couple days oh, okay. ago. Okay, so, yeah, so it was like maybe this, it, maybe this will ping on people's because we'll be Googling Woody Harrelson. Oh, I wonder. We What's also funny is uh, Woody actually on Saturday Night Live uh, a little while ago, I think he did a thing on dads. Did you guys ever see that? Uh, this was mm -hmm. his fifth appearance. Oh, was it? This most recent one. Oh, wow. Well, yeah, I remember one that he had. It was... uh. Like there was this kid in his room. He's like, he's like, Dad, I need to talk to you. And like, Woody comes in. He always has his phone. He's like, Yeah, yeah, hold, hold on a second, Jim. Hold, hold on. He's like, Yeah, go ahead, son. He's like, I'll talk to you anytime. He's like, Wait. And like, the phone rings again. He's like, Yeah, go ahead. The kid's like, <laughs> Just keep blowing him yeah, off. Yeah, yeah, the kid's like, starts singing this song about. It. He's like, How's Dad? He's like, He starts doing a rap. He's like, You know, Dad's always on the phone. Something never leave me alone. I got an F on my test. Dad don't even know. Like all this stuff. Like, and then, uh, yeah, he's just trying to talk to his dad. And what he's like, he's trying to be a good dad, but he's like saying how his dad's never there for he's him. He's just busy. He's always working. And yeah, he's like, Kind of like the cat in the cradle and stuff. Yeah, yeah. but he's like, he wants to, yeah, because yeah. he's like, I want to play catch. And right. he's like throwing the ball at himself. So like, Bouncing hey, off the yeah. wall and stuff. Damn. Yeah. That wall's relentless. Yeah. But I'm saying Woody probably related because he's like, yeah, my dad was never there either. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you're right. You're right. 
But uh, man, we went way the fuck off the tracks on that one. Well, I mean, no, it's, it kinda, is, it's, yeah. it's relative. It's Woody Harrelson, and he's yep. part of the story. But the, yeah, the whole but, the whole thing's rel- it just it blends in. Yeah, but but I wonder uh, if like I wonder how his. Uh, yeah, I mean, like his dad was never around. Did he ever have like a stepdad? His mom get remarried? I don't know that much about him. I don't know. Yeah, I'm not this sure story either. was about Charles Harrelson, mm-hmm. not his dickhead son Woody. I do know they said so. They said you said he left when he was seven, correct? Yeah. And then uh, he heard on the news it was in 1981, I guess, 8081, when his dad was arrested or mm-hmm. whatever happened, and uh, he heard the name Charles Harrelson on the radio or TV, one or the other, and he asked his mom, hey, is that, yeah, who is are we that? related? To yeah. and, and she was like, yeah, that's actually your dad. And he, he found out then. Yeah. You know? But, um, yeah, hey. he was obviously wasn't involved. He just wanted to go where everybody knew his name. Yeah, yeah. Her- yeah so Harrelson, I'm pretty sure, was in college at the time that his dad went to prison. Oh, yes. okay. Yeah. Yeah. But for this. Right. For this, John. Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the judge. I got to be rough growing up, though, like when you're meeting, like, uh, Chase dating or, yeah. Like, well, what do you, what did your parents do? Like, how are you, are you close to your parents? Like, well, I didn't know my dad, he murdered some he judge JFK, or something. Yeah. yeah. Like he said he killed JFK. I'm not sure. Like, we don't know. Mm. You think it would help him in Hollywood, like get, get roles and shit? You going for the role? And, That's like and with the and natural born like, killers. Well, I'm and, just saying, yeah. give me the role. Cause this is my dad, you know, one of them deals. will take you out. Yeah. Here's his card. We were talking about that earlier, you know, using it like to threaten people, probably feel threatened, like better give him the role or, but I guess if his dad's locked up. But, yeah. You know, for for one of our stories that we do, you know, for, uh, for, for a crime, for a true crime, um, we were trying to find some stuff on this one. I, we all thought, I think it was interesting to put out there that, that Woody Harrelson, everybody knows who he is. It's a mm-hmm. famous dude's father. Yes. Right. And then that a lot of people like us didn't know about. And I, I think that's I, something I, that's, that's a fun, not I, fun. I don't know I, how to say this. I it's knew, fun. I, it, was, it was, it was, cool. it was, it was fun. cool to find out and cool to learn about. Cause I knew nothing about it. And I think compelling, every, I think that's it was, the word it we was use. Compelling, yes. yeah. I feel compelled. Yes. And it, it had there a little McDonald triad in it. It had a little yeah. bit of everything. I thought it was good. So wait, does Woody have the McDonald, a little bit of McDonald in him? That was a killer. Yeah. But was he in the service? I don't know. No, he was no. not in the service and he probably didn't service piss his pants. Ladies. Yeah. He probably didn't do that. Maybe. I don't know. He yeah. probably didn't do shit with animals like kill them or torture them or whatever you do. Yeah. True. I think Woody's safe. And if you guys ever have any cool stories or true crimes or reached out to us, speaking of which, one of our top fans, Officer Vince, reached out and uh, told me about one. I don't know if you guys saw this. It's called Don't Fuck With Cats. It's on Netflix. Yes, I saw that. Did you see that one? Never heard of it. It's very good. It's a really, really good one. Uh, Basically, this guy starts with cats on the internet, killing them. Okay. And uh, He feeds them to like (laughs) like snakes and shit. These people on the internet are like trying to track him down. And then he starts progressing. He starts killing I think bigger animals and then, and then people, he gets to and, people and it gets, and they, they're, they're searching and hunting this guy down and you find it, it's a crazy ass story. Shout out to officer Vince. He, he said, Hey, this is a cool, I said, I did see it and I will mention it to the guys. Yes. I seen it officer. So Vince. It's a good one. It's just that easy officer Vince on Instagram. He hits me up all the time. Hey, loving the show, blah, blah, blah. That's awesome. I got to check this out. Thank you. Officer yeah. Vince. That so, sounds cool. No, as if shit. you look at like these people went to the point as like, I looked in the background and I saw a, you know, Orion vacuum cleaner. They're like, well, they only make these in like this country. So they went to that country. Like, well, where's like the most bought at? And they go, and they were like trying to, they were like tracking it, it down. down. Yeah. And like things that were in his room, like the stereo that he had stuff. Like it, it was insane. It's a good one. Yeah. Mm. So, but that's what you're saying. Don't fuck with cats. Like the, the whole reason that these women and men, whoever started it was because these cats were being murdered. But then the guy turned the whole story like into a, yeah, thing. He, he, it he, gets real deep. It's deep, man. So, yeah, we'll, we'll do that one, I'm sure, coming up at some point here. And if you guys have anything like that, anything you'd like us to cover or, you know, talk about, like, we're, we're definitely open. Reach out on Instagram, Facebook. We have a show email. Uh, you know, if you know us personally, reach out and, uh, you know, we'll see what we can do. Yeah, that's one of the things I was hearing about uh, us down here at the basement is we're um, very, I, w- I wouldn't call them fans, but uh, listener friendly. Like, people when they talk to us or if they see us somewhere or if they hit us up on, uh, on the internet, you know, like, Hey, like that sounds like a great idea. We're going to cover that for you. Yeah. One thing that drives me to do this more and more is like, uh, interaction with, with people that are listening. It, it like makes me, gives me a drive to want to do it more. And, and sure. And the hell ain't money. It's not, <laughs> the sure as hell is not money. Not at this point. <laughs> what, what about the sweatshirts? Yeah. The sweatshirts oh, yeah, are that, pretty sweet. Yeah. yeah. You know, but yeah, uh, Definitely reach out to us if you have anything else. Like, did you like it as a cover? You guys got anything else on this in, in closing? I got nothing. We beat the shit out of this one. Yeah. We wrung this rag dry. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh, just uh, 
I thought it was cool that people see Woody Harrelson doesn't like you see a lot of these people on TV or you grew up knowing somebody, but you know nothing about them. Mm -hmm. So they're like, oh, Woody Harrelson, what his dad was a, oh shit, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, I did like Woody Harrelson, True Detective. Did you guys watch that? Oh, great. What was the girl in that? Is that the Dodorio girl? No. Oh my God. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, it's worth watching. Uh, <laughs> what the hell just <laughs> happened there? That was a uh, pigeon. Season one, True Detective. It's uh, him and McConaughey. Okay. Yeah, Shallow yeah. would like that one. Yeah, but, yeah McConaughey's It's worth that. watching. It's good. The okay. other ones weren't as good, but yeah, check that out. I remember the second one wasn't ago. that bad. I yeah. The first one was pretty good. Yep. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's it for now. So we'll catch you where? On the flip side. If we don't see you sooner, we'll see you later. Peace. Thanks for hanging out in the old dirty basement. If you dig our theme music like we do, check out the Tsunami Experiment. Find them on Facebook. Their music is available streaming on Spotify and Apple and where great music is available. You can find us at Old Dirty Basement on Facebook and Instagram and at Old Dirty Basement Podcast on TikTok. Peace. We Audi 5000.